things around us? Class 6. Science. Things around us can be broadly divided into two groups. Living and non-living. There can be certain characteristics that make living things very different from non-living things. Let us learn about them today. Structural Organization Living things have a definite structural organization. The bodies of living things are made up of cells, which are the building blocks of the body. A cell is the smallest living structure that is able to function independently. A group of similar cells that perform a particular function form a tissue. A group of tissues performing a particular function in the body form an organ. A group of organs interacting with one another to perform a particular life process, such as digestion and respiration, form an organ system. There are organisms made of just one cell. An organism whose body consists of a single cell is called a unicellular organism. Example, amoeba and paramecium. An organism whose body consists of several cells is called a multicellular organism. Example, human beings and a rose plant. Movement and response to stimuli. Most living things are capable of moving on their own. Animals move from place to place in search of food and water to escape from danger and many other reasons. Plants do not move on their own. However, they exhibit movement of their certain parts such as leaves and roots in response to changes in their immediate environment. A change in the immediate environment of an organism, which produces a change in the activities of the organisms, is called a stimulus. An organism's reaction to a stimulus is called a response. Leaves of touch may not curl up when touched. Here, touch is the stimulus, and curling up of leaves is the response. Growth and Development Living things grow. For example, a child grows into an adult, and a seedling grows into a plant. Growth in living things is irreversible. For example, we cannot get the seedling back from the plant. Excretion Living things remove wastes from their body by the process of excretion. Most animals excrete solid wastes in the form of feces, liquid wastes in the form of urine, and gaseous wastes in the form of carbon dioxide, gum, resins, and latex are wastes given out by plants. Respiration The process by which living things utilize oxygen to release energy stored in the food they eat is called respiration. Plants and animals respire all the time. Breathing is a part of respiration. By breathing, we inhale air that contains oxygen and exhales out carbon dioxide. Plants also respire to obtain energy from the food they make by photosynthesis. Reproduction Living things have the ability to reproduce more of their kind, through reproduction. Different organisms have different means of reproduction. Plants reproduce mostly through seeds. Animals reproduce by either laying eggs, or giving birth to young ones. Nutrition All living things need food. Green plants manufacture their own food by photosynthesis. Hence, they are called autotrophs. Animals cannot manufacture their own food, hence they are called heterotrophs. They depend on plant and other animals for food. Lifespan and Death All living things follow a cycle of growth and development, in which an organism takes birth grows into an adult, grows old, and, dies. 
This is known as the life cycle of the organism. Environment All living things depend on their surroundings for food, water, and shelter. All that surrounds living things, and affects their growth and development is called, their environment. Both living, and non-living things, form the environment. Living things such as plants, and animals, are called biotic components. Non-living things such as air, water, soil and, temperature are called, abiotic components. The word biotic means, living. Biotic components are those that have life. Plants Animals Scavengers And decomposers are biotic components. Most plants have green leaves. Leaves are green because they contain green pigments called, chlorophyll. Chlorophyll gives plants the special ability to make their own food using light, water, and, carbon dioxide. This process of making food is called as, photosynthesis. Animals cannot make their own food, as green plants do. Thus they are called, heterotrophs. Both animals, and plants, need substances, called nutrients, in order to grow. Plants absorb nutrients such as nitrogen, phosphorus, and calcium, from the soil. These nutrients enter the bodies of animals when they eat plants, or flesh of other animals. Animals that feed on the dead bodies of other animals are called, scavengers. For example, hyena, and vulture. Tiny organisms that feed on the remains of dead plants, and animals to break them down into simpler substances, are called, decomposers. Bacteria and fungi, are common decomposers. Scavengers and decomposers play two important roles in the environment by keeping the environment clean by removing the bodies of dead plants and animals, helping in the recycling of nutrients in the environment, interactions among biotic components. Plants and animals depend on each other for various needs. Animals mainly depend on plants, for food, and shelter. Animals in turn help plants by pollinating flowers, dispersing seeds, etc. in nature. The relationship observed among plants, animals, scavengers and decomposers are as follows. Plants, producers, utilize the sun's energy, and manufacture their own food through photosynthesis. Herbivores, primary consumers, such as rabbit and deer, feed on plants. Carnivores, secondary consumers, such as tiger and lion, feed on herbivores. Omnivores, secondary consumers, such as human beings and bear, feed on both plants, as well as the flesh of animals. Scavengers, and decomposers, feed on dead plants, and animals, and release the nutrients trapped inside their bodies into the soil. These nutrients are then absorbed by plants, which help them to grow and manufacture their food. Abiotic Components The word abiotic means non-living. Light, air, water, soil, and temperature are examples of abiotic components of the environment. Even though these components are themselves non-living, they have an effect on the living organisms. That is, the biotic components of the environment. Plants use light to prepare their own food. The growth of plants and flowering are also dependent on the availability and the duration of exposure to light. For example, kharif crops such as maize and cotton flourish in summer when day length or exposure to light is more. Temperature is a measure that tells us how hot or cold something is. The Earth is the only known planet that has a temperature suitable for life to exist. Even on the Earth, the temperature is not uniform all around. It is very hot near the equator. 
whereas places near the poles are very cold. Temperature affects the distribution of plants and animals around the planet. Animals whose body temperature changes with outside temperature are called cold-blooded animals. Most reptiles, insects, and amphibians are cold-blooded. Animals whose body temperature does not change with the outside temperature are called warm-blooded animals. Example, mammals and birds. Oxygen and carbon dioxide present in the air are very important for the survival of organisms. Both plants and animals need oxygen for respiration. Animals and human beings release carbon dioxide during respiration, which is used by green plants for photosynthesis. Carbon dioxide is also released by burning of fuels in vehicles and factories. Plants, in turn, release oxygen into the environment. Thus, green plants play a very important role in maintaining the balance of oxygen and carbon dioxide in the environment. Water is very important for living organisms. Plants absorbs water through roots, which is then transported to different plant parts. Water is essential for carrying out photosynthesis in plants. It also plays an important role in the human body. Blood, which transports substances within the human body, is largely composed of water. Water dissolves vital gases such as oxygen and carbon dioxide. This enables living beings to survive in water. Soil is the uppermost layer of the Earth's crust. It has four sublayers. Topsoil Subsoil Parent material and the bedrock. It is in the topsoil that plants grow. Soil is usually very rich in minerals, such as magnesium, potassium, and phosphorus. Without soil, there would be no plants, and thus, no food for us. Plants grow well in loosely packed soil as it allows their roots to grow deeper. Ants such as earthworm, and snail, also make soil loose by turning it. Thus, in nature, biotic and abiotic components are closely interrelated. Biotic components interact with one another too. A group of interdependent organisms that live in same region and interact with one another form a biotic community. A biotic community include plants, animals, and microorganisms.